Welcome back, everyone, to Book of Dawn, IOTH Academy. I'm your Game Master, Tormented by Gnomes, joined once again after the break by Crowen, Leg Day, and Lemon Kiwi. And before we get into the, the full run of this, I want to give a shout out and a thanks to our sponsor, The Book of the Phantasm. It's an awesome Kickstarter. They've only got two weeks left. It's the third in a series. They've created a world that is made from the embers of a dying god. They've got their own unique campaign setting. They've got a unique form of magic called spell forging that lets you create custom spells and magic items for your characters. And if you back now at the, oh, what is that in a freedom bucks? $23 or higher, you get all three books in the series. 20 pounds for non-freedom bucks. Freedom if you bucks. do exclamation point <laughs> Kickstarter in the chat, you'll be able to see that. You can also see it down below in the description if you're on Twitch or on YouTube. Uh, and with that said and done, let's get back to business. When last we left our heroes, they had just discovered that the Book of Dawn has been replaced with a replica. Meanwhile... Athelor and Utramaler were racing through Tarselmore Hall after determining that Cryus was not the infection vector that brought the mirror into this place. They were on their way to find Sig, Ariana's tutor, the head of magical botany, and someone who had already been a vector for the Infernals in a previous incident. And if Utramaler, the library cat, would get off of my stream deck so I could run the show, <laughs> that would be fantastic. That, oh, is it Affle all time? Let me at him. Let me at that. <laughs> Regards. Regards. <laughs> I'll kill that little. <laughs> all right. Garnet, the little bits and pieces of the Herald bubble together. You hear a laugh that chills like a passing glacial wind, and then it dissipates again when you call out to Alex. Nothing else happens. Uh, does Mason, like, pick up on that? No. At all. I think it might be more fun if you do. Okay. I think uh, Garnet gets like really sad and starts to reach out to Mason and see and just stands there reaching out. Are you what I am um, okay, are Mason you, like you walks back you know? forward. <laughs> and like once he gets closer, like takes his hand and that that spell the the mental uh spell. Mm-hmm. Is it active? Do you... I can draw the runes for it. You want me to? I just, I just want to try something. I think he's here. Uh, Mason's like looking backwards to the sage and the Eldar walking away. It's like, does, well, does at this point be... have stopped at the top of the stairs because they don't want to okay. let you out of sight. And so they've, you... they've turned around and giving cool. you a come on kids sort of look. Mason turns around, it's like, what, what, one sec, just holds up a finger, and then, yeah, we'll cast the Circle of Mental Blessing, so mm -hmm. just some of the magic imbued in his horns, touch the ground, and the circle will spread out. And not sure if this is how it mechanically works, but she wants to use kind of, like, his, men like, our mental co connection mm -hmm. to, like, kind of take the mental connection between herself and Una and almost like try to pull it like an end of a rope to see if mm. that if that like mental fortitude that he's casting can help me kind of pull on that okay well uh connection. You did call on Zalar for guidance and strength and you do have this circle of runes so I'm gonna have you roll an arcana check plus five plus one d6 Plus five, plus one d six. Mm -hmm. Oh! I set the DC at thirty. <laughs> so, oh shit! And you cleared it. You cleared it. <laughs> Hell yeah! You reach out, the two of you together, with this sense of clarity, with the light of the sunrider, and you pull, and for a brief, brief moment. You reach all the way down, plummeting. Your stomach drops with that sheer sense of, of free fall through darkness, through solid stone, through deep, cold waters. Until your mind reaches out through an enormous cavern into a huge cave. 
an enormous cave, and from it, at the heart of it, is rising a tower of dark metal, slowly forming itself, slowly growing in the heart of this enormous cavern. It almost looks like the spire, but not shining with the same gold that built that heart of Ioth Academy. This is, it absorbs all light, it reflects almost nothing, and it continues to just rise bit by bit like a plant reaching towards a sun it will never find. And inside that spire, at its very heart and its very roots, inside of a cage, your hand reaches in, and the barbs, the spells on this cage are barbs that shear and cut your mind itself as you grasp Una. Roll an intelligence saving throw, please, Garnet. With advantage from the from the rune spell? Is that how that works? Oh. I think I can re-roll it using a reaction if I fail. If they That's what I yeah, Okay, if so if you fail, fail you can... they may use reaction re-roll, yep. Okay, and you already used the plus five, so you can't use that again. Oh, well. Uh, shall we? <laughs> Thank God That's... for basic. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's like straining in the circle. Mason's like trying to hold the circle together. All right. You, you reach <laughs> through. that one. <laughs> yeah. oh, please. Maybe. <laughs> and you seize it and you pull it in and the spell shatters apart and Una is flying back with you and just before it reaches back you see a passageway leading out from this heart of the spire somebody standing there turning the pages of a book that shines with the only light in this accursed place golden light gleaming across his skin scales around one half of his face, winding down his body, one of his eyes now replaced with the green and yellow of a serpent. As Alexander looks in shock for a moment, as the cage fractures, the spells of binding are shattered, and Una is pulled from his grasp through the four kingdoms, through the underworld, and reappears inside the office. <laughs> Part of me is like, yes, we got Una back. And part of me is like, oh, but Alex, what the fuck? That was badass. <laughs> it's just like traumatized from what she's seen. It, what's Una doing? She's just like flop, flopping on the floor. Clinging onto your boots. Just like. <laughs> I saw the, Mason, I saw the book. Where, where was it? It goes to describe the cavern and everything and. I, Alex has the book. And you just reached through there, right? Could you do it a, a, again? I'm and then I made some gesture. <laughs> made some gesture. I think I'll know in the sage back over. Okay. When they see this display of magic, and then suddenly freaking Una reappears, they're yeah, they're yeah. gonna walk back over. Okay. And then kind of like, okay, Garnet, can you? Repeat that to, to them. And I, I saw Alex has the book. He's he's in a cavern. He's it was like the spire, but not the spire. It was dark. Alex has the book, and he's got scales. Per I'm not sure if you've ever seen either of these people more depressed, more scared than in this moment. And Elna mutters under her breath, what do we do? Oh, well, Garnet just kind of reached in, brought Una back and saw that. Is there any way to utilize that kind of pull again and get to Alex or the book somehow like that yeah can't you look at what i saw and you could tell where it is at least not mm -hmm. here right Bouncing around at the floor yeah but yes. somewhere 
He already knows how to use it. He's already been within it. Una can tell me everything they saw. Maybe what they're planning. El now looks at the stage and says, we need to go now. Before he has time to beat, we, we can't allow that to stay in his hands. The longer that they have it, the worse the damage can be. We need to go right now. Hmm. Despair's Herald's power has been invoked. A harmful lie is uncovered by force and happenstance. What did that apply to in this? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Mason's tie into mirror magic? I don't know. That seems like a perfectly apt one. <laughs> okay. We'll uh, see the best way to go about that. Yeah. Okay. The sage lifts a hand and says, enough. If this was their design all along, they may expect us to be on our way. Whatever preparations need to be made need to be made now. And if we leave again and there are others who have been replaced, they could do unspeakable damage in our absence. Okay. Let's leave this place. I will see what Garnet saw. You reunite with Untramaller. Survey the entire story. The entire faculty and we'll make a plan the longer we wait the worse it gets the archmages walking stiffly shakily still processing what it is that you've just told them are going to start walking out the door again down the stairs urging you to follow yeah. follow Okay. As we do, Mason say to Garnet, I, I know that probably wasn't easy, but good good job. Thanks for getting me out. I wasn't sure I was coming back for a second. <laughs> yeah, I, scary. No, you, you it was it was all you. Good work. And as we're walking out, we'll probably just take a look back because she hadn't been in the office probably since maybe the Alex incident. I think so. I can't so recall. Tough, tough memory to remember, but follows everyone out. And we'll question Una during the journey on what mm -hmm. they saw and what they heard and stuff. All right. Una reveals that they were ambushed by an Alep while flying back to deliver your message. And that same Alep, once it engulfed Una, in its madness, Una awoke inside the cage and saw several people down there and witnessed this spire growing on its own. Roll a perception check for Una, please. And then while you do that, uh, and buy me enough time to figure out exactly how much you would have been able to learn from that, uh, Athelor. You and Untramaller and Naanderud were all going to speak with Sig, correct? Sig slash faculty, depending on our timeline here. Okay. I guess would suggest the sage to scrub Una for all the memories that they might have. Okay. All right. The two of you. Um, you have to figure out the best way to split up. Okay. Two of you are going to go with me to my office and then um, we'll have Untramala come here with the lantern so that I can leave with them to handle everything else. So you're going to head back to the conference room that Sage is using as her office, which is in the spire, so you don't need to fly around. There's going to be a short walk. Athelor, you were on your way before any of, while all this was happening, you had some time to go find Sig. Who was not uh, in Ath the, go ahead. Oh, uh, Athelor, just while they're walking through the corridors, uh, addressed the bear. Do you guys know much about mirror magic? Hmm. Now, Andrew will say, it doesn't obey many of the standard laws, an intriguing discipline, but one with outrageous dangers. Um, 
just hypothetically, um, can a mirror clone and uh, the originator of that clone exist in our mortal world at the same time necessarily? Or can only one exist outside of the mirror dimension? Well, under all known circumstances, only one can be within the four kingdoms at a time. Technically, the plane of mirrors is not one of the four kingdoms. Uh, so that would apply not only in the mortal world, but to the other world, the underworld, and the overworld. There's no known instances of a mirror clone and the original occupying the four kingdoms at the same time. What if you just pointed, like, two mirrors at one mirror? Wouldn't, in some way, our own plane become a mirror plane for a different plane? I'm not precisely sure that it works that way. It would depend on whether the mirrors are constellated or not, um, but pointing them at each other would certainly have replicative effects. I, uh, it's theoretically possible, but you need some sort of supporting spell matrix around it as well, so that the interspacing the space between them could also be constituted as part of the mirror, perhaps some sort of elaborate prism structure. What are you suggesting? Just, just wondering, in case uh, we happen to need some, maybe not infernal mirror clones, but opposite of us, reinforcement types. I... You think your opposite can be convinced to work with you? I'm not thinking about my opposite. Knock, knock, knock on Sig's door. <laughs> <clears throat> All the way up. Sig was not in the greenhouse, so you had to fly back to the spire in order to go to Sig. Actually, no. We'll take the teleport circles. Back door, secret passage by the records room, where you've obviously never been and didn't know about in the first place, right, Athalor? I didn't I didn't go in there. I wasn't wanting to commit a crime. <laughs> well, now That's you fine. know what they are up to. Teleport to there and go to Sig's real office, which is heavily concealed and full of all the deadly uh student eating plants. <clears throat> the door swings open, Sig towers looks eye to eye with Untermaller, just standing that tall. Doesn't shield their eyes at all from the light of the lantern. Just sort of stares into it, unblinking. Now, now that you're at this range and you know, you can tell that the eyelids are connected to the tissue with silk threads. They don't go naturally on their own. Some sort of muscle mechanism inside that makes that work. So just staring at you, Master Untamaler, Athalor. What? I thought that's until we were talking for this one. This isn't his mission. <laughs> right. There has been an incident. Red Knob is dead. And Sig will step aside, usher you into the greenhouse full of incredibly deadly plants, caution you on exactly where to stand, and Utramala will spend a few minutes hastily bringing Sig up to speed. Reading Sig into the entire situation which was something that they weren't originally going to do, but uh, because of how important Sig is to Ariana and how tied up Ariana is with this whole plot, Untermal will just go ahead and re read Sig in. Have you noticed any strange behavior on the part of any of the students? Or staff or wardens. Mm. You've only been gone the two hours. I have not seen anything. Perhaps the plants will know. And Sig is going to walk over and lean up against a wall, and the assassin vine is going to squeeze around Sig's neck in an attempt to choke them out. But, you know, flesh golem construct barely matters. And Sig is going to cast Speak with Plants and start communing with them. Can you ask any plants in the academy? With enough focus, yes! In the last few hours, who had an appointment with Red Knob? Oh. 
Okay. Hold up. One, one, one thing. One, one second. I'm going to need all of your assistance here, team. Okay. Uh, any I'll plants? Any I'll plants in chat? <laughs> oh. Anyone see any plants anywhere? Any potted plants? Hmm. Anything? I'd have to zoom in on these bookshelves. Uh, it's a pretty high quality, um, pretty high quality image. So you should be able to do that. Surely, yeah. right? I don't, I don't think it's what. Uh, what's in this little like cage wait. thingy? Did did I not notice this mirror? Is that a mirror? None of us noticed my that 20 mirror. investigation. All right, yeah, no, that that mirror is canceled. Um, <laughs> that, that mirror is, is on now. The mirror is canceled. It's deplatformed. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I didn't notice that before. Can't he talk to wood? Wood is like a part of a uh, tree plant. I'm, I mean, the, it's just not alive. I'm figuring just like anything that's even outside the office, just like in the hallways in the Tower of Divination. If there was something in here that would change the nature of what it is that you found out. Mm. Okay. All right. Yeah, that mirror never existed. Nobody saw that. It's, it's not real. He should it's be gonna... able to talk to wood. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, for that, you, you have to combine speak with dead and speak with plants. Mm. Necrobotany is a completely different field. Okay. No one had an appointment. There was one student who entered. A student? Yes. Of flesh and of earth. Climbed the steps, bearing something large and covered. A mirror, flesh and earth. And when the student left, they went to another tower and bore with them that same covered object. Okay, so we had the Master of Abjuration and the Master of War with us. This is Master of Divination, uh, our Master of Enchantment. What do we know? Let me pull up that file real quick. It'll either be Enchantment or Necromancy, Illusion, or Evocation. No. All right. Uh, Thingy's Evocation, right? Elnau's technically Evocation. Yes, El now is the master of evocation, and gotcha. recently promoted. Obviously, okay. The master of enchantment, Mindartis Arius, uh died during the Great Werewolf Apocalypse, and has been replaced by understudies. Let's see, uh, Master Arumawan Humplebumple, a gnome. Obviously, <laughs> you know. Look, you can't account for gnomes. All right. That's the, that's the master of illusion. Uh, let's see, who else do we have? Where are the other ones? Illusion, abjuration is present. Evocation got promoted. Taranath Nanenri, master of conjuration, and Mythurio, master of necromancy. Okay. It was the tower of the dead. We need to find Elna and the Sage now and let them know. All right. Sig, you're with us now. Don't leave our sight. A few minutes later, by, I don't know, you can just walk upstairs. As everybody converges on the Sage's conference room, the whole party is reunited. And Untermaller starts giving his report, and then he sees the look on the sage on Elnau's faces. And they go over to convene with him and Sig and Master Na'an Darud about what's happened. 
leaving our students a brief moment to talk amongst themselves. Your call if you want to, or if you want to proceed with the scene. What the hell happened? They look even worse than before. Uh, she'll kind of like sadly walk over and just kind of lay her head on Athlor's shoulder, really bummed and not really say much and kind of look at Mason. What Alex was up to where he is. Where, what, what does he do? Steal the book. The, of Dawn. The, that book. That book. And you said you knew where he was? Where? In a cave. Do we know which cave? I guess the sage will find out. Yeah, I. You saw him again. He looks different. Athlor kind of like puts her hand like on the back of her head, like scratches her hair a little. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's got scales and like a weird eye now. Yeah, I imagine that whatever pact he made to slip through Iof's clutches is beginning to come due and he knows a lot about how we work I need to ask the sage something okay. I thought kind of like subtly takes her shoulders like stay upright I've got you <laughs> waddles over and, then... and leans on basin <laughs> And then, like, sidles over to the side of the teacher group, like, at the respectful distance, but very clearly looking towards the sage. All right. The sage will go ahead and speak with the others. Um, Untramaller is already formulating a plan. An immediate tactical strike. Everything that we have. This is more important than anything else. This is the greatest security risk. With that, the entire academy could be unwoven. We have to act immediately and decisively. As he's muttering this and the sage sort of sees you and, and gives you a moment, Master Na Andrud breaks away from the party and places a shoulder, a hand on Athelor's shoulder and says, A word, Master An Andrud. Of, of course. Uh, how can I help? He's going to step away from the rest of the party. And so now we have three groups. Mason and Garnet collapsed in a heap in one side. Most of the teachers plotting amongst themselves over in another. And Master Anandarud and Young Anandarud off on another side. Switching into the Alfar tongue. Master Anandarud will say, Father is deeply concerned for your safety, and this most recent development has done nothing but confirm that you are not safe here. Well, if the most recent development is that Alexander has found the Book of Dawn, but I don't think I'm safe anywhere, Master. This place's very foundations were woven by that same magic. It is tied to the spire, born of it. You would be safer in Andrud than here, where it could be torn apart. It's tied to the spy, it's tied to me and you. We're Dawn Elves. There is more of the light of this dawn. This place is our birthright. There is birthright and there is blood. And you are Hadarai's blood. More precious to him, more important to the well-being of Andrud than even this academy. My, my blood still has some value to someone who's not my father. Gives you a quizzical look. Yeah. 
I need to speak to the sage about something. Very well, young master. But I must tell you that your father will, if he hears of this, I expect him to make some decisions very rapidly. Very well. I'll, I'll cross that bridge when it comes, but we've got a very immediate one that I'm standing on. He will step away with a polite bow, just a slight dip of the head, a little bit more than would normally befit a master to a student, and will rejoin the rest of them, by which point the sage has stepped away intending to head over to Garnet and to Una in order to walk through their minds and see what it is that they perceive, but intercepted by Athalor. She doesn't say anything. She merely looks at you meaningfully and waits for you to speak. Garnet said she saw a cave. Do you have the means to find it? Yes. Good. Uh, did you find out what the echo was? It is the essence of the Herald, at least here to prevent me from seeing what truly happened. Is the Herald's involvement deep? How deeply was he involved with Alex? Incredibly. Then yes, there as well. they have all shared everything that they've learned with each other to set up every possible obstacle against us. I, if the Herald does become a huge issue, as he shares a domain with you, we've seen what the Sunrider can do to him before. I was um, I was discussing with Master Narandaruda rudimentary experimental method of maybe being able to have someone's opposite mirror clone and themselves exist in the same plane. And it's probably stupid, but I think the side of Garnet that never studied the void might be incredibly useful to us. If he's here. She almost imperceptively looks over at Garnet, who, if she didn't already have such a tempestuous history with the sage, perhaps would not even have noticed. Athalor, we could not predict the choices that such a being might make, nor their loyalty. The mirror does not produce somebody from a different timeline or somebody with different lived experiences. Up until the moment that they step forth, they have every single memory and all the same powers as that person. Sheer mirror magic alone would not produce the light to that darkness. And besides, did she not wield that strength recently? What if her other equivalent wielded the power of the sun, but then chose to lean just as hard into the void as she did on the Sunrider's day? You're suggesting something incredibly dangerous and unknown. I'm just saying when it comes to fighting these apocalyptic level events, it's always good to have an extra garnet. That actually gets a tiny, tiny smile out of her. If there were two garnets, that would constitute an apocalyptic event by itself. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if this theory has any weight, and if it can be brought into practice, if all else fails, we can consider it. But that is an unknown path. Perhaps more dangerous than even what we're dealing with now. It was worth a thought. I hope you can 
and find this cave. If not, we have more dangerous options. Very well. Was that all, Athelor? Yes, uh, Master Sage, thank you. All right. And she'll step away. The teachers convene for a moment, leaving our heroes amongst themselves, and then the sage will go ahead and approach Garnet and Una, uh, sitting down in almost like a meditative position directly before you. Untermaler will you overhear him saying something about the Tower of Necromancy and an unknown student who could be the vector. Before we do anything else, we'd best see to Lyferio. Why necromancy? That is the only other tower that the student went to. You hear El now his parcel more. And at that, the sage will go ahead and sit before Garnet. No hint of her calling you the Godzilla threshold upon her face. <laughs> and each of you may regain a spell slot or similar ability as adrenaline surges through you and the sheer dire nature of the situation becomes apparent. Thank you. Right. And she will go ahead and stretch out her hand to the tiny shadow imp and to Garnet. And let me just... Before she casts, mm -hmm. she's just going to like look at the sage with not like the disdain as she usually has, but okay. almost like a sad look. Like this is the person who would tell her the truth at this moment. Like no, mm -hmm. no bullshit. And is it? My fault the book is gone because I dragged everyone to save my mom and left the academy defenseless. Is it my fault because I tried to kill Alex and now he's on this rampage when we could have saved him? What would he have done if you hadn't stopped him? I don't know. I feel like I could have saved him. And I feel like you'd tell me the truth if I did something wrong. I think you've done to the best of your ability in the best of the circumstance. Yeah, just holds her hands out. <laughs> and she's telling the truth. And she'll go ahead and Reach out to both of you, and scintillating blue light flows forth from her, the power of dream that she's soaked up during her trances, and it emerges over the two of you. And you once again find yourself in that dark cavern, deep, deep below the earth, at the very earth's core, walking in a shimmering, ephemeral version of what it is that you beheld. It doesn't seem quite real. You've experienced the sage's power before when she entered memories and brought everything to life in 4K. That is not this. This is all very through a thick veil, through a fog. And the, sta the sage stands within the memory and steps carefully. So she's not being blocked by the uh, mm -mm. A shroud? She is not being blocked by the shroud because you're voluntarily sharing your memories with her. So as she steps forward cautiously, she changes the scene. You pass through the walls of the tower to the outside, up near the roof of the cavern where you were moments before plummeting in. And wisps of dream light flow forth to Athelor and to Mason. Not enough for them to stand within the memory, but enough for them to see what it is that they see 
and to speak and be heard, if not seen. <clears throat> and as you float above this cavern, all of it, again, foggy, the sage focuses for a moment and the area immediately around you comes into focus. The actual colors of the place. The darkness, the all-consuming darkness that can only be seen because your eyes can see through it. And she's seeing through your eyes. And slowly she extends that perception out, waiting every few moments as she stretches it further and further, bringing things more into focus, as if afraid to make things too real, afraid to bring them into full reality. Bit by bit, she looks around the underworld. And she extends it forward. And now you can see at this distance, the cavern is an enormous partial sphere, partially sunken into the earth. But that space all around it, a mile from side to side. And at the center, rising from it, this spire of dark metal slowly growing. A twisted reflection of the school you call home, encased within the stone of the underworld instead of the golden light of Ioth, still growing, still nascent, like a living thing, like a blight upon the underworld itself, bit by bit. And as she extends it further, bringing that spire into focus, taking it from this wispy fog, solidifying the memory, he stops. I need all of you to roll charisma saving throws. Is that mental shit from Mason still active? Uh, it's only when you're within the circle. Yeah, and you guys... Oh, that's on... Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna use my lucky dice. I'm a lucky dice that shit too. Aha! Aha! Uh, <laughs> charisma. <laughs> Glad we got that redemption. <laughs> <laughs> Completely fine. The sage, everyone's doing good. Okay. Oh, okay. As she continues to extend that vision, the column rising from the center begins to freeze over. Dark, oily ice starts to rise up the sides of it. You did not see that when you were there before, Garnet. And the sage... I point that out. The sage brings her hands down and the vision recedes back into almost nothingness. And you find yourselves awake. What was that? The was herald. that another... Yeah. Did you see Alex? I did. Only in Echoes. If I got any closer to it. The Herald exists in dream. And to dream of him is to be in his presence. He's there with Alex. And as long as he is, it's not safe for us to enter that place mentally. But I know enough. Rednop, Did you find out where that cabin was? Yes. Well, Rednop had an amulet of the four kingdoms he could have used to just take us right there. No matter. I have enough. Do, do any of you have anything that belonged to Alex? Shit in his room, don't we? I More think of a... I might have his uh, out of character here. I think I might have his green gala dragon pendant thing. You might. I think you do. I think he gave it to you. No, the one that he had specially crafted to be like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm yeah, I'm a dragon guy. Smile. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, 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 no yeah, weird. Yeah. <laughs> I remember <laughs> that. Put him here. I'm just a dragon guy who likes dragons and things. Uh, dragon guy. Doing dragon Smile. stuff. 
Dragon D's nuts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, man. <laughs> Understandable. Have a nice day. Yeah, that, that's fair. Right. Uh, disadvantage was played for dramatic effect earlier. I think I'm just going to go ahead and soak that one on the. <laughs> that's me. That's that's all me. Okay. Before we get any further, at the very beginning of the night, there was an augury card spell, uh, an augury card played, which is a really cool card that features Alexander on the art. Ooh. And that right. gives the party the immediate benefits of an augury spell. Uh, you can. Ask a question about a course of action that will take place in the next 30 minutes and discover whether it will be, yeah, okay, more disadvantaged. That's understandable. Have a nice day. Discover where, whether it will result in wheel, good stuff, woe, bad stuff, both or nothing. So, so it has to be something that happens in the next 30 minutes? A course of action <laughs> that you plan to take in the next 30 minutes. Please don't kill me for saying this. Um, you said it was dangerous to face him in dream. Yes. But I've confounded a dream master before in dream. The sage gives you a dark, dark look. I'm not saying it's the first option. But it's got to be on the table when we're thinking about what seems like at least three infernals in league, because we still don't know where the mirror keeper is. The Lord, do you think that your uncle will be inclined to help after we have silenced him and torn him from you for so long? If you put me in a dream state and he has himself a little tantrum in there, then it might just be a few of us in there. Well, the sage is the one to kill them all and let God figure them out. So, yeah, I mean. Oh. Okay, that's an option. That still leaves two infernals. If we do this, and we have to do this before things get any worse, we must seek the Book of Dawn and get out. And strike as terrible a blow as we can in the process. But only one Infernal has ever perished. And it was an age that is gone and can never return. If not in dream, is there any way to get there physically? Since we... Do we know where it is now? Yes. With something of... Something of Alex's. The more personal, the more dear, the better. We can reach him. So, wheel or woe? Is, it, is this what we're asking right now? Yeah, you can ask about a certain course of action. If we do X, will it be good, bad, both, or neither? And is that the Lord's question what that was, or is he just... That was, it seems like more of a general question for the sage. Yeah, just, okay. just spitballing, slash with yeah. the sage, slash with the crew. Mm-hmm. So you haven't you haven't cashed in that augury just yet. What course of action in the next thirty minutes do you want to get a read on? And I feel like every single time I've done this, the answer has been wheel and woe because it's usually about something <laughs> really risky. But you know, maybe it won't be that this time. Risky but rewarding. That's like the school in a nutshell. Yeah, fair. It's it's the entire goddamn campaign. <laughs> Can we bank this for a little, not like, you know, still this session, but I just need okay. time to yeah, think. Yeah, it has to be this session. It has to be this session. The plan now. We're going to see who we can trust. We're going to gather them together. 
We're going to travel to the underworld, and we are going to strike before they can have the chance to make things any worse. We're only going to take as long as we need to make the best possible preparations. Can anyone here miniaturize something? Or shrink it? What's the Master Transmuter up to? Yeah, Master Transmuter's from Mazru. They'd definitely be able to pull that off. What do you have in mind? Uh, if there's any of Alex left in there, I feel like I could, we could slow him down by showing him that and that he points to the covered mirror at the back that he dragged in is there anything else that would he'd have a more personal connection with than th her the person trapped in there no I would say us, but he's gazed upon us and been an arsehole, so. <laughs> Very well. This is probably going to be more dangerous than when Boreas attacked this school and you faced off against him. Perhaps more dangerous than the threat that we faced in the Bronton camp mere moments ago. Whatever preparations you need to make, make them now. I, I just have a concern, I suppose, if... Well, obviously they've taken steps to kind of counter us and what we do, and surely if they've taken the book, then they know that want to get the book back so they're probably expecting us what is choice? there any way to lure them out perhaps why would with... they leave can you think of some reason why they would leave from their place of power with uh, that source I'd... of magic uh, i don't really personally know alex that well garnet athlor what else did alex want do you is there anything that could kind of tempt him it was difficult to kind of divide his priorities from the Heralds. Mm. They wanted Ioth to suffer for what they called lies. They, the, the Herald seemed to be almost on the quest to uh, punish any almost righteous lie that they could find. I am... Um, Sage, I once pulled you out of that dream by speaking to your statue. Is there any way to contact whatever vestiges of Ioth's consciousness remain through his? I don't know. I've tried to reach him through every path that I know. They all lead to the covers of that book. But I haven't been able to find another way in. His statue, perhaps. If I couldn't find him, I don't know who could. But I didn't have his quill. That quill is the thing that is most closely connected to the Book of Dawn. It wrote the words upon its pages. It spoke his new Luminius into being. It's the most powerful channel to it. It's not required to use its abilities, but... <clears throat> perhaps, perhaps with that, we may be able to do something. A wild idea if Garnet is down for it. Um, I know that you love your little baby Void Sphere. It's not a baby. 
I'm hoping it's not a baby. It's quite a above average size. <laughs> if we know where we're sending something, can we just drop to... that in there and, and let it bounce around a bit? It's not a bouncy ball. I need to channel it to move it. And what if it get, hits the book? Well, I'd say no Book of Dawn is better than Book of Dawn in the hands of an infernal agent. Well, I don't know where the things in the void are going, so... True. Okay, so no void bombing. <laughs> Just Elna looks over, like, like from her com her strategy conversation with El with uh, Undermaller. Oh, we're bringing the sphere. <laughs> That's coming with us. She, she zooms into it. Can okay. you make it bigger, Joanna? Like, that entire place down there is, like, essentially a sphere. I mean... There'd be nowhere for them to hide. She, like, ignores your question for a second and looks at El now. It's my sphere! I say where it goes! Darn it, are looks we bringing at... the sphere? Yes! Sorry, what I were thought you saying? So. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, wait, make it bigger. Uh, I haven't tried. I been more yelled at for it existing than making it more of it. I'm just spitballing, you know. Uh, they've got their tricks and we've got our own. Mason, can you cast protection from good and evil? No. Okay. Well, so much for that idea. <laughs> uh... El now, um, mm -hmm. Merrick did request that I open the gates of this silent city while this being part of their whole plan to release the dragons to kill the infernals, and they don't actually need the infernals. So I'm just wondering at what point they're disposing of, you know, the serpent and the mirror keeper, and what is their role? What is our role if we're just there to stop them why haven't they just killed us i don't know okay think from what you know about alex what you know about their design they all saw to it that you would specifically the infernals saw to it that all of you all of you she looks over at mason all of you would be at this school Mirik conspired to make sure that that happened as well. The dragons of the Seven City destroyed the Infernals, but they are neither their friends nor their foes. They were merely bound to do so. Think, think, think. All of this was for a... Are they, they're making a, a copy down there of the Academy. Does that include the people in it? Do they want us specifically here? Just... So they're cloning everyone to be the mirror keeper's servants to they would need to do the entire academy to bring down all of their the serpent craves knowledge there's no greater source of knowledge than what is within the book of dawn they accept what lies beyond the side the gates of the silent city i don't know what they're planning and i don't know why they're building their own school and i don't know where they're going to get the populace to to bring that up This is for a reason. Why do they bring you to the school? Why are you still alive? I don't know the answers. Is, is it the case that through all of us specifically being here was through infernal influence? She's here because of Merrick's machinations. So infernal. Athelor. She looks over at Master Andrud. Athelor has a different connection. I don't know what the Mirror Keeper intends for you, Mason. But their hand has been at place since that first time you stepped into that cavern. Yeah. Under normal circumstances, I would try to convince you not to come with us to preserve your lives. 
But I both know that's useless, and... Perhaps, if your role is not yet played out, they won't just kill you. Perhaps hmm. that's one of the only advantages that we can rely on. Yeah, would, would like not to die. Okay. I have the book I could... We each need to be able to make ready and prepare ourselves as much as we need to act quickly. We need to make sure that we are in the best possible. Untermaler, I'm going to open the vault. That seems appropriate, Master El. Now, I need you to make whatever preparations you feel are necessary, and I need you to bring the lantern with you. Because we can't risk you being replaced at this point. Or any point. You have... You have two hours. Whatever you need to do, do it now. I'm trying to think of ways that we could isolate each of the infernals that we know is connected to this. We know the Herald is there. We know the Serpent's power is at play but we don't know if the serpent is there. We know the machine prince's power is at play, but I doubt the machine prince is there. The machine prince is relatively immobile. The destroyer... You still have the soul cage of Tarsimal in it, right? Hmm? You still have that soul cage of the remnants of Tarsimal, yeah? That was with Mirfirio, the master of necromancy. Oh, that's bad. Yes, I suspect that was targeted. Speaking of targeted, we'll be, while you are making your preparations, we will be paying Mephirio a visit. Very much like the last one, to Red Knob. But I think it's safe to say that Tarsum was gone. There are some remnants of Tarsumor's knowledge that are in uh, him. I was wondering if that sharing of knowledge might provoke the serpent into an exclusive action. Sorry, into who? There, those remnants are in who? Refresh me. Uh, uncle. Right. Right. That is, see, of the players involved, the serpent is the one with the most obvious hook. The one who can be most easily baited. And... Your uncle and whatever it is that's following your uncle from beyond is outside the serpent's knowledge. That is possible. What you know about what lies beyond and what you, Garnet, know about the void in the Silent City may be things that knowledge secrets that the serpent still craves. That could be a way to draw them out. As for the Herald, uh, they wanted to see Ioth's legacy broken. If we don't succeed here, it will be. If we want to separate and bait Infernals, I have a definitely dumb and only maybe helpful idea. If the Well, they're all dumb here, so... Yeah, um, if the Mirror Keeper has targeted me or wants me for some reason if once you go in I mess with mirrors to try to bait them away that could go catastrophically wrong what if you're replaced yeah that's that's the definitely bad idea part mm -hmm. but it does buy time in an emergency Athalor Work with Mason. Put, use that quill. Put runes of shattering on his horns. Okay. Uh, the moment Athelor draws they, out the quill. The moment that he crosses a mirror threshold, it will go off. A safeguard mm. once. This will take a while. Mm -hmm. Okay. The mirror, we're going to leave the lantern with you. We're going to go pay a visit to our master necromancer. 
in two hours, we will come get you. And I guess I'll leave someone behind to start planning a party for everybody. Concert. <laughs> oh, um, and the final bit about the Herald not liking the legacy of Ioth. I still think that it might be a good bait for him if we ceremoniously elevate him now. To make her the target? The heir. Well, Master Elna is always going to be the target. Right. But if she is Ioth's heir, then the Herald's work isn't done. There is something we can do with that. All right. Think about that. Say your wish well to whoever you need to wish well to. Arm yourselves with whatever you have. We're going to go take care of Mirfirio and open up the deep vaults to ensure we're prepared for this. Is it all right if the teachers leave now, or do you have anything else? They'll be back, but do you have anything else for them right now? Augury question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go for it. I don't know how the timeline of this, throwing it out there, asking mm -hmm. for a friend, mm -hmm. going to the Silent City. Yeah, I knew. <laughs> and ah, using the spell to trap Merrick in a mirror and shattering the mirror. Wheel or whoa? Just curious. <laughs> Darn it. Whoa. <laughs> whoa, but spelled with a W O H O A. <laughs> um, whoa? Whoa. Whoa. Garnet, roll an arcana check for me, please. For an augury? No, what? not for the augury. Just for your own edification. How can this happen to me? <laughs> nice. Well, I guess I'm not going to play cute with this. I'm just going to go ahead and. Okay, so this high level mirror spell. Here's how it works. God damn it. This is the exact. There was like, what? Okay. Mirror trap. You attempt to banish a creature that you can see within range, 60 feet, into a mirror you are holding or that is near you. The creature must succeed on a charisma saving throw or be trapped inside the mirror. So you got to assume Merrick's got decent charisma saving throws, right? For starters, while trapped, you can see the creature through the mirror and likewise. The mirror is able to transmit sounds or even magical energies, but not physical attempts to reach or attack. A trapped creature can still cast spells as long as it doesn't need a physical connection. If you concentrate on the spell for its full duration, one minute, without getting messed up by the creature, the creature is then trapped for a week. And you can renew the spell to try to keep, keep them trapped for another week and another week and another week. Under normal circumstances, it, when the mirror is destroyed, the creature has to save or they just take damage. And if they fail to save by five or more, they are immediately destroyed with anything they currently hold. So there are a lot of factors in play for this. It would have involve failing a save and then, fail, and then you destroy the mirror and failing another save by a large margin, right? By... Five. Got to imagine Merrick's pretty high level. Got to imagine Merrick's got a decent charisma saving throw. You'd need to overcome all of those obstacles. The reason that I asked you about a Arcana check is because if the mirror were to encounter a sphere of annihilation, that completely changes the math. Because he would have to, if he, let, let's say, succeeds the save while in the mirror, like, to break out, he's just breaking out into the fucking void. 
like the, it's voided, right? Well, so where it, do you no, come the, out the of? sphere of annihilation will annihilate it. Maybe oh. something ends up in the void, but it's not like you just take a portal. It's like it annihilates you. And oh, I thought it was it just sent shit to the void. Oh, yeah. If by the void you mean annihilated, maybe yeah, true. maybe <laughs> it's like a black hole and it spaghettifies you and it shoots out energy that used to be you into the void, but it's not you. It annihilates things. So theoretically, if you could overcome all those obstacles, defeat his saving throws, you could trap him in a mirror and destroy him. Because I guarantee you, his power is strong enough that in a straight up fight and his void magic, he could take control of the sphere away from you and use it himself. But not if he's stuck in a mirror. Can a mirror trap be used in conjunction with someone else pulling you into a mirror? Theoretically. Now you're thinking with portals. I would a need... Of mirror can Naomi. I, I would need, like, literally all my spell slots, and I can maybe do it. Just talking to the party here. Mm -hmm. See, Gnome just needs to deafen so he can't like, prepare. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. I don't... She, the whistles. only reason that I've thwarted you so many times is because of what Alexander knows. My NPCs don't metagame. Yes. The, um... <laughs> Earmuffs. If, if, if we have a look around whatever, um... Mirror shit is going on. Oh, Am he I actually took a shit off. Okay, here, listen. <laughs> okay, dartboard. No. <laughs> <laughs> Now my my oh. like my series of bullshit would be trap him in the mirror. If he tries to like do literally anything spell wise, fuck you, counterspell. If he and then he tries to fucking if he somehow succeeds, silvery barbs. And then okay, so let me count my spell slots. Okay, so the one spell slot to put him in the mirror, counterspell mm. as a maybe optional second slot, and then that's my all my spells. My silvery barbs is free. Right. To fuck up at least one of them. You have a silvery barbs too to fuck up. I, I have a uh, silvery barbs. Continuously fuck up his rolls. And then shattering the mirror, I imagine it's just going to be a free, like, just like, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Remember, if you shatter the mirror, the he, he, he gets a save. He has to blow it by five or more. Which then and the second silvery barbs, or I don't know if Mason has anti debuff stuff that's that. the thing you need to think about debuffs because his saves are going to be pretty high uh his charisma save is going to be pretty high and the spell save is currently based on your saving throws. yes if you're the spell one casting the spell yes now there are ways to debuff somebody and give them penalties but if someone's saves are high enough like you saw the numbers Uzul was throwing yeah, around but, earlier right like if they roll with disadvantage they can still pull it off so this isn't a no-go. It's just you're going to need to hammer this guy. Isn't the Merrick more powerful than the Sage? That's the thing that was said before. He's at least in the same uh, way. Merrick's about class. often with the Sage. He's more powerful than L now. Do we, are we allowed to know like mm -hmm. our like L now's spell save DC? Or like the Sage's yeah, spell save? Uh, screw it. Why not? The Sage's should... spell save DC is... Let's do... Um, disintegrate. Where's, where's dis no, she doesn't have Disintegrate. Oh, let's do Finger of Death. She has that spell. She never prepares it, but she has that. Her DC is 19. See, that's three better than mine. So already 100. one of them should cast it. And then we can just debuff the shit out of them, which would save me a spell slot to hit him with more Silvery Barbs. So you're suggesting that before you go fight for the Book of Dawn, you go kick Merrick's ass. So, like, my idea behind this is that I think Merrick is the mastermind and the one mm -hmm. pulling the strings and the one who's reeling in all the infernals to do this play. He's, like, kind of, like, the boss. like The chess master. Like, Anachronist, like, has the, uh, like, the idea and the other ones are just kind of little pawns and Merrick is the one bringing them in because Alex has, like, dragon scales, which I feel like weren't really around until we kind of discovered Merrick was a fucking dragon. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any other dragon related bullshit unless it's unless it was serpent scales in which maybe that's a descriptive thing. It could have been. Could I tell the difference between serpent and dragon scales? It was serpent. No, oh, <laughs> never mind then. That theory's out the window. Well, I mean, you know. Still the idea of pulling strings, Merrick dying is, you know, fun and also maybe helpful <laughs> to the plan. 
Especially if Merrick is like the only person who's not there. Yeah. Just it could gank be him. <laughs> Just gank him <laughs> away from the rest of the party. <laughs> if it works, it's it's kind of lit. Well, like Mason did say, like, you know, let's isolate somebody. Mm-hmm. He's someone who's isolated and accessible and someone we can get close to without him immediately firing off death bullets. Mm-hmm. But mostly that or plan number two would be Garnet just goes, I will call everyone's fucking name. They all hate me. They all want to kill me. So <laughs> let me just like be bait. <laughs> Zethius wants to kill her. Nacritus wants to kill her. Alex wants to kill her. Just so summon like, every infernal and then run. <laughs> and just, I don't know, whatever trap that y'all want to put, but that <laughs> I'll just be bait. Those are like my two planes that I was thinking. What What do you guys think of that? Uh, I guess it also, the front of the planes depends on how quick, if at all, the infernals could assist Mirik if Mirik was ganked. I guess we don't know that. Well, we didn't see anyone in the Silent City. Mm-hmm. And it's locked up since the dragons are there and they can't get out. And oh, only man. dream bitches can go in there. And so only heralds can really make for trip easily. Mm. Dream magic and, and void so magic we- are the only known ways of getting there. So Harold could get there. But would he want to abandon it. Alex? Or will Alex want to abandon the book or whatever structured bullshit they're doing to go save Merrick? Who who knows how important Merrick is to their plan? It is a risk. We'd be able to. It's either we kill Mirror if we get rid of an important person, or we draw Alex and the Herald to Silent City, where is where the Sage is the most powerful, which is in Dream World. And at least it would be a fair fight. And, Instead of going uh, to their base of operations and fighting them head on, because Silent City is like voidy and dreamy, which is where El now myself yeah. and Sage would be the best at. So if we drew them to Silent City. It might be an environment we are better at. Uh, I, also, I, I know Sage and Elnau are like, oh my god, the book's gone, but like, what does the book gone really do? Like, is it that imperative that we get it back immediately? Like, it's sphere's it still up, it? so yeah, what, is, what does it do? It's not so much that the sphere being gone is bad, it's that them having the book is bad. Mm-hmm. The book basically grants wishes. Gotcha. So not unlimited wishes, bad. but yeah, like oh. they, it has a huge amount of dawn magic that can be used to do not. It's not unlimited, but it's unlimited flexibility. So they could do a lot of damage with it. That's the gotcha. concern. Well, I guess is the damage like time related. Like if they have already had the book, haven't they probably like pretty done with it? What they were going to, and now it's just kind of chilling. Depends on what sort of a thing they're trying to do. Um, they could probably already be using it, but it doesn't always work in the flash of an eye. When mm-hmm. Ariana used it to learn things, the transmission of knowledge is instantaneous. But it took Ioth wielding pure dawn magic years to build Ioth Academy, to raise the sphere, to make everything float. Mm-hmm. That wasn't okay. an overnight thing. Um, so they have That's a true. huge resource. They've got this pile of, of of stem cells of magic that can be converted into almost anything and they probably already started using it yeah uh, okay. but they wouldn't be able to just like i mean yeah they could probably drop a magic nuke but if they're not already doing that they're up to something bad yeah there's there's, there's, a, there's a channel time going on. okay from a silent city what was that how quickly can we dip from a silent city and just get out of there just wake yeah. up lamau <laughs> If you go by dream, it's a question of whether you go by dream or whether you go there through shadow walking, which L now can because do. I think the best play would be after slash when you get Merrick in the mirror, you yoink him out of the Silent City as quickly as possible, because that's where he is at his strongest. Mm-hmm. Well, you just void him right there if I can, but yeah, whatever is easiest. Um, I also think we should go to Silent City because we know Merrick's like primary goal is to open the gates of it and if the book of dawn can just do anything they would have opened the gates which means that either the book of dawn can affect the silent city or maybe that's taken a long time for them to do keep in mind but, Merrick might want to open the gates the infernals are not eager to see those dragons anytime soon there's probably some difference of yeah objectives there and go mm-hmm how selfish is Merrick? 
He's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so it's how much... I mean, if he's able to manipulate, like, Garnet and Al now, he'll probably be able to manipulate Alex into doing whatever the fuck. And he'd be like, fuck these infernals, let's open the gates. <laughs> Yo, minus is Azetheus, he's chill. But, like, everyone else, <laughs> fuck him, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'll give you power you more either. than the serpent, you know? Mm. But we know yeah. that at least, like, Garnet, like, at least going to the Silent City to talk to Mir, like, she can maybe try and get information about the plan before voiding him, but that would be awkward. It depends on whether you want to go <laughs> alone or if you want to bring the entire kill squad. Yeah, you just be sent out. We're just all sitting in a bush, just waiting, ready. <laughs> In case something goes Go? wrong. Is, it, is that the sign? <laughs> you, you do remember the Silent City's in the middle of this infinite oh, plain of oh. dust and there's no bushes or cover anywhere for like <laughs> anywhere. It'd have to be like a signal a out of dream. Like right, if, it would like have the, to be like, yeah. Like a dream and the sage could like read how I'm dreaming or something like while not being in the dream, but see what I'm doing maybe yeah. somehow. Mm -hmm. That, that's theoretically possible, yes. What kind of signal then we can just shadow walk in? How long does like shadow walking in take? Well, uh, Garnet's seen doors just open to the Silent City before. So theoretically very quickly. Yeah, it can be nigh instantaneous. You also have the freaking Book of Seosh. I haven't figured out what that does yet. I was kind of oh. saving that as like my nuke, but I don't know when <laughs> the fuck I know I'm going to need the nuke. So Here's the thing. When I said that they're opening the vaults, what I mean is they're getting the nukes. They're, oh. they're, they're like What's their going nukes? uh any magic i like the, all the magic items that they keep locked up for a rainy day they're unlocking that crap oh shit oh yeah. i'm gonna finally get my blood well vial let's go <laughs> <laughs> all the air crew snacks for you mm, delicious exactly. delicious I'm just gonna just gonna snack on some crispy blood I guess we can um, theory craft this stuff. I was going to say, you're going to have a whole week because we have four minutes left. Oil. So two things. <laughs> One, I need you to spend that augury. Perfect. And two. Behold, an oh boy. Haunting horns. The call of an unearthly hunt awakens the memory of primal fears. All right. So that's the haunting horns that scare the crap out of everybody. I'm going to save that for next time because I think that fear is definitely in the air for a variety of reasons. So I'm going to hold on to that one if you don't mind. Can the Augury perhaps a suggestion be just Garnet first going on her own and seeing if that's wheel or well? Like if we Miracle all each get one or is it just mate? one Augury? You, the party gets one. Oh, shit. Oh, oh sorry. You, I thought we all had one. Nope. You get oh, one what? as a group, so you're going to need to come to a consensus in the next, like, three or five minutes. Right. I mean, it's probably this Merrick I think plan, it's I think. Be, do, do we go to Merrick first? Was it the, are we wanting to True. kill Merrick with the mirror, like, mirror shatter, or just talking to him and getting plans? Mm, I, I feel like almost more generic, like, do we just go to Merrick? Is this the worst or better? But Is that too general of a be... question? Yeah, it might be wheel like, and woe. Yeah, that's 100% going to be wheel and woe. I'll just give yeah. you that one for free. <laughs> yeah. It's either Has killing Merrick or... a specific or... course of action from going to, like, in going to Merrick versus... In the next 30 minutes, too. So oh, wait, you, could say minutes, at the, so we... you could say at the end of our 30, at the end of our two hours, you can say you do this at the end of your two hours, and then next session we can have your tearful goodbyes and such, and then get into yeah. saving the universe again. Um, so I'll let you... Fast forward it to the end of your two hours, whatever the question is that you uh, want to ask. During the two hours, I go to the Master of Transmutation and have the Nera zoop. <laughs> mm, then you get Mira cloned along the way. Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh. Uh, oh no, I slipped. All of, <laughs> I was so clumsy, all of the things <laughs> fell off. <No! laughs> I think. I think it's important to know what would happen if Merrick would die because Wheel would tell me, okay, we're going in the right direction in terms of mm. like, okay, we're getting rid of a mastermind of their plans. Things may get fucked up. Is there a neutral answer? Is there like, oh, who gives a shit? Like, Wheel or the four, Woe? Like, there are neutral? four answers. Wheel, Woe, Wheel and Woe, and nothing. So, because it could be not, like, if Alex doesn't fucking need Merrick, then it would be, like, neutral. Like, Merrick doesn't have that much of an impact on the plans. Oh, well, it'd probably be Woe, because he's a really scary bad guy. <laughs> you know, and fighting yeah. him would like, end poorly. We, 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 we could ask, because, like, 
killing Merrick would always be Will, right? Because he's an asshole. Yeah. Like, whether it's to do with the Infernal Plan or not, it would always be Will for him to die. So we, we can ask more specifically, like, would killing Merrick first, um, how would that impact the Infernals? But we put it in a way where it can be Will or Woe. For the Infernals and their current plan, what would the death of Merrick in the next 30 minutes mean? <laughs> You want That's to go with that? Yeah. So is that what? Can you say it again? I'm dumb. Twenty in for for the three infernals who are currently in a cavern building a copy of Arth Academy. In the next thirty minutes, uh, what would the death of Merrick mean to them? Okay. Yeah, I'm dumb. It'd either be like none or or wheel. Right? They'd be either happy because he's fucking be annoying, because maybe Merrick yeah. is trying to kill them all along and they're happy about him dying, or whoa, True. like that would mess <laughs> things up. Yep. That sounds good. Is that the question you want to ask? Uh, wait, 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 wait. Accepting the contingency of the release of the dragons for the three infernals, the Mirror Keeper, the Serpent, and Despair's Herald, who are currently underground in a cavern building Earth Academy. <laughs> in the next 30 minutes, would the death of Merrick be wheel or what? Going once, going twice. Whoa! Okay, so no, so... it no, it, I, no, it was both. It's bad for yeah. them. Yeah, you said yeah. for the yeah. infernals. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. I, so I bad for infernals. <laughs> Luckily, everyone else was listening while yeah. I was talking. Which it's is like, it's a good question. It's a good question. Which is like obvious but at least it confirms that he is important to them in some capacity and it would jeopardize some part of their plan even though i don't really know what part Mirk plays besides really just being the one who's reunited us but his that that's been done so what else you know obviously there's something more that he's doing I don't know. Let's go mm. fucking kill him. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't know. I, I like to. I will see you next time. <laughs> I, I want to end the episode on this note. As Untermaler and like the most powerful wizards at IF Academy are drawing up their battle plan about going down to grab the Book of Dawn, this core artifact created by Ioth himself with the power to shape worlds. These three students come up and they say, "Okay, so here's a thought. Hear me out." What if we go somewhere completely different and kill this other guy? <laughs> oh, no, she gets it. My girl gets it. Okay, okay she gets she, it. She gets it. She got me. If nobody else got me, I know Elnau got me. All right, let's go ahead and, and call it a wrap. <laughs> you have, I think, a week to... Oh, poor, poor Necra. Hey, what I miss? Oh, I already messaged her. She's like, hey, I was obsession. I was like, the Book of Dawn is gone. Everything's <laughs> fucked. And she's like, like, I can't the... wait to edit the episode. <laughs> <laughs> more like the Book of Gone, am I right? All right, uh... I, I got to get out of here before I get in any more trouble. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining us. Thank you to Growin, Leg Day, Lemon Kiwi, and all of you wonderful folks. We will see you next time on Book of Dawn, IOF Academy. <laughs>